Welcome to Buell Hill Park. My name is Mark Frith and I'm going to do a quick tour around the park and some of the assets that we have here for community use. So the aim of Buell Hill Mansion Association is to work with local residents and the community to bring a bit more love back into the mansion area. So as you can see behind me, this was the first project that we worked with a group of 20 volunteers on just before Christmas and we did a second stage of that before the lockdown. Planted lots of medicinal herbs in there, edible crops and some sensory plants to reflect the history of the site. The next stage is to put some planters in front of the mansion to make it look less like a car park and more like a house where people would just live. The mansion house is only part of the estate complex. As you can see, we have a wooden greenhouse and it's been blocked off and deemed unsafe. There's numerous buildings as well that have had arson attacks on them, which is such a shame, uh, given it was a vibrant heart of the park. We're going to go over and have a chat with two other board members now, uh, Marquetta and Petra, and their children. The story is quite similar. We, we've met in Salford four years ago, and we, this, this park is our local one. We take it to walk and you know, watch about. And we found out that the mansion somehow is a common subject of passion. Yeah. Then Petra found the group on Facebook, and there was a meeting held in November 2018, maybe mm -hmm. 17. Yeah. So we went in, and then we were asked to join the committee. So we did. Yeah. I know Paul Tennant's been very supportive. Of very much, yeah. The mansion association, yeah, he and his focus is to try and help us yeah. and, and the rest of the, the sort of ways of utilising the building and reopen it to, to public access in the yeah. near future. Uh, my focus is events. We had we had several plants we wanted to kind of take off the ground but we couldn't because of the current situation. In, in the background we've been doing a lot of work haven't we? Keeping yes. in touch with the, the council yes. to see what they've been uh, working on in, in the background <laughs> and also the, the, the cleaning of the front of the mansion. So it's a big yeah. thank you to Kernan Park Plants, uh, donated 700 plants, and then we're now looking to find um, a range of planters, half of the barrels, of the barrels uh, that we can plant outside the mansion. Yeah. So what's kept you sane during the lockdown? Mainly my garden and this park and the parks around Salford, you know. Uh, we've been going for walks every day. And you've been planting up the plants as well for us. Yes, I have, yes, which I've enjoyed very much. <laughs> so mainly the outdoors, really. Thank you, Marketa. <laughs> uh, Petra, do you want to tell us a bit more about your journey? Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> okay, darling. Basically, um, as Marketa said, uh, we met about four years ago and uh, my little one was... She was very tiny and uh, I was struggling a little bit, you know, as a moved from London and it was a big change for me and to realize that in Salford you basically don't have much to do and don't really have anywhere to go you know especially when the weather is not very nice um, so I did meet my kids in one of the groups in Langworthy and we kind of noticed this empty beautiful building and uh, started <coughs> talking about like how great it would be if it was open to the public, if there was something to do for the, you know, everyone really, you know, in Salford, uh, people could use it, it would be for their benefit and uh, yeah, basically that was the, that's how it started and then, as my kid I mentioned earlier, I tried to contact friends of Bill Hill Park and then how it all started, that how it how we golf bag basically came yeah. on board. So there's quite a lot of individual groups that you have It's true, that's so. true, yeah. And it's important that we all work together, you yeah. know, that we we do this together because we're doing it for the next generations, we're doing it for literally everyone, you yeah. know. Well, I I really found people have slowed down a lot. Exactly. They're not going to work, commuting. Exactly. They've actually got more time to stop and talk. At a distance, obviously, <laughs> in Covid times. <laughs> Having that time to talk to the different groups um, and find out what each group wants yeah. know, from the park 
has been very, very useful. Very and like you say, the, the way we've kind of come together, it's been, been very heartwarming to see the number of volunteers coming out and to, you know, look at the park, watering the plants, exactly. working on a website as well, so yep. that people that are not on Facebook, yep. and we've got the Instagram page. Yep. Public green spaces are very important during the lockdown of 2020. The number of people that we've seen come and use in the park has increased dramatically. So what was great about our community allotments was that we were able to come and socialise and also do it in an environment where we could be socially distanced at two metres. I had to tick a lot of boxes uh, to persuade the council to allow us to open the allotments but they were very supportive of us and it's been an amazing project. So let's go and have a chat with some of the allotmenteers and find out how they've enjoyed working on the allotments during the lockdown. Hi Chris, hey, um, we've just uh, been having a quick tour around Beale Hill Park so we started off at the mansion this morning and just showcasing what the Mansion Association have been doing up there. And I thought, while well, it's such a nice day, we'll pop down and see, uh, see community allotments. And I was just saying that I, I came here probably about nearly 10 years ago, 2011, and I was working with Stark Creative to help convert the bowling green into allotments. About four and a half years ago, I moved into the area, always going for walks, cycles, runs around the park, and it's just always having a bit of a nosy around, just seeing exactly what's going on. So obviously, with the, the, the mansion and the old hot house up there, really so I've always been a bit of a, an avid gardener, so I started helping out with the, the maintenance crew and since then it was just try, trying to help out, make a bit more of a, a difference, meeting up and try and get more people involved was the, the key yeah. thing for me. Yeah. And I was just saying earlier that you know the, the work we've done on the ponds and clearing out around the fences and people are actually engaging and, and saying how much of a, a really good job that all the, the volunteers and yeah, it's, it's, have been doing it's, on site. it's been great, the passion everybody's bringing to it, so you can look around and see all the beds now. Back, back when we started, coming down March time, when we fed March time, we were really chatting about it, it was just overgrown with weeds, and now pretty much every single bed's got, got an owner to it, the communal beds, so everybody's been chipping in, and yeah, yeah we're, we're really making good progress, it's looking yeah. more of a community asset now. It's been we, great, we are getting so many people down, so many different ideas, the, variety of fruits, veggies we've got going on. It's really uplifting to bring everybody together and you go, hopefully once the lockdown's finished, we get more of the passers-by can come in, they're not put off by having your gloves, your own tools, hand washing, it's been keeping people looking from afar. But well, you're not just doing your allotments on your own, are you? There's someone else with no, you. Oh yeah, so the par partner in crime has been tending to everything, keep keeping her fingers active with these, these weeds popping through. Yeah, let's go and say hi to Sarah then. Yeah, see you in a bit. See you in a bit. I've been here for about a year, uh, maybe 18 months. So a long route, Chris, and then we've just been coming up and help maintain the site. And it's really nice at the moment to see more and more people come up and enjoy the area and use the space and grow things for their own, uh, for their own kitchens. It's helped during this time because for me personally, I've got a lot more free time. And to be able to come up to an open space like this um, particularly when the weather is so beautiful, it's really, um, it's just really helped to kind of like, you can kind of forget what's, well, you don't always forget, but you can come here and it's a bit of a haven, you know, you don't always need to worry about what's happening on the news, and you have these hours up here and you're in another world and then it takes your mind off it, which is really, really helpful. Um, once we society goes back to some kind of normality hopefully more people within the community will want to come up here and just take more of an interest because we've got a lot of community spaces space here as well um, so the more people that come up and learn about how we grow our own food and so it can be a place where people can enjoy themselves but also learn about um, like growing things and horticulture as well so that's really something that I'm looking forward to. My name's Katie, um, I'm originally from Littleborough but I'm currently residing in Salford uh, with my partner. What things have you got growing? So here? at the moment we've got a mixture of things from salad to veg. Here we have tomatoes just about coming through and a variety of lettuce, cucumbers around here. 
This is broccoli. Tree broccoli. Sprouting broccoli. Sorry. No, that's the purple sprouted. Oh, okay. That's the purple sprouted broccoli. This is your normal broccoli, oh. as I call it. <laughs> um, we have a lovely lavender bush, which is just about flowering. Some cabbages, which I don't know if you can see are under here. Yeah. I can smell something a bit right. Some chicken yeah. manure? That's, that's is that you, manure. Aiden? <laughs> Here we have some cauliflower, it's feeling a little bit sorry for itself but it should be bouncing back soon. Some carrots, just about shooting. This is radish, radish plants. Um, beetroot, I don't know if you can see those tiny shoots. The beetroot and this is Brussels sprouts. And here we have some corn, a mixture of corn and sunflowers. Oh, it's a, it's a whole medley up there. Yeah. Aidan, do you want to come and tell us about what you've been doing on, on your plot? Because I've just said it, it was a bit of a, a weed infested site and falling apart. So you've done a lot of work on it, haven't you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, basically, I did the bed. I left a planting for Katie. And this bed was um, just widening going to the side and it is like a little bit rotten on the side so I dig the whole soil out and um, sieved it put plastics around the side and that stops it from getting rotten any further and then we put um, cardboard box down sieve the soil on top and cardboard box to stop the weed coming through again so that's basically what it is and what's it meant to you having the uh the chance to have an allotment site during COVID time? Well, it helped me to come out because yeah. um, I was stuck at home and I wasn't really um, enjoying the time and because it lasted so long and um, it's amazing, amazing to be able to be, come and do something and be free and it's not a lot of people around. So, yeah. I usually get anxious around people, so it's a bit of a peaceful sight for me. <laughs> and you've done a lot of work, so it's, you've been keeping you fit as well. I remember watching you and your brother doing the sieving. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The oh, soil. oh yeah, and that's the main thing. Uh, I think I lost about a stone just sieving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know why Ashley didn't go, but <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm the only one that... <laughs> you were doing a lot of digging as well though, weren't you? Oh yeah. yeah. So. It was, I would say, um, it was a, it was a, quite a lifesaver. I was, I was struggling a bit towards the end of lockdown and I noticed, you know, I, 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 that it was a place to come here and what I loved was the, the spirit of it and it was a place that was safe and I, I learned some new things. Oh. So I was making the willow tea. Yeah. It's good for rooting plants. Yes. And yes. You, you peel it a bit like a potato and put it in a big bucket and uh, brew it yes. with water. So it's been fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing that with us. Okay. I'll see you soon. Bye. 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 Um, my prayer has been answered because yeah you know I can be part of this group here I can yeah. be part of this allotment and uh, I was very thrilled I, 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 I floated for days I couldn't believe it that you know yeah. it was so easy so gorgeous so everything that I wanted oh fantastic and you've already had your first harvest as well haven't you I have yes yeah, some radishes some white radishes that I never uh, grown before and they were amazing. Very spicy, but very good. Yeah. Really and what are you going to grow next? What's your, your next thing? Uh, I'm waiting for some pak choy to be ready. Um, I've also got some lettuce, but I am um, because I've never grown pak choy before, and I can see the little hearts forming and everything. Yeah. And so I'm so excited. So that's <laughs> the next the next harvest that I want to you know to. Right experience the joy. Oh that's great. Well thanks very much for your time. No and problem at keep all. up the good work. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for being um, you know so kind to us and generous. Oh you're welcome, you're welcome. Thank you. It's it's given us a way of actually 
having a bit of social contact during what's been quite a difficult time, so it's been a little bit of a lifesaver to get us out of the house and doing something that has a purpose. And we've met all these nice people um, and shared stories and laughs and we've grown lots and lots of wonderful yeah. produce, which is starting to... I would say bear fruit, but bear, can you say bear veg? Bear veg? Bear veg? I think so. I can yeah. see something glimmering just down there in the oh. corner. And these red radishes, if you can see them, have not taken long at all to get to this sort of edible size. You might even pull one up. Shall I pull, pull that one up? That one? Okay. There you go, that's our first produce. Oh, fantastic. From our bed, <laughs> live on camera. There you go. So you can wash it down and have it for salad tonight. You can. That's going to be our lockdown tea tonight. <laughs> Unless I just <laughs> dust it off and pop it in. Yeah, you've, got, you've got to share it. <laughs> have I got you, to share? You have to share. That's the whole part of a community garden. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks very much for that. You're welcome. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye bye. My garden backs onto the park, and from my uh, when I'm sitting in the room at home, I can see the park and what's going on. And I've always loved it. Originally, when I moved here, the, the mansion house was open. There was a, a petting zoo. The whole park was lovely. There was a park keeper who lived in the park. Mm -hmm. It was perfect. And then over the years, it's gone down and down. And one day, I was in the park, probably five, six years ago, walked around. I couldn't believe the state it was in. Went home, got a camera, took about 12 photographs in all different areas, sent them to the mayor, I can't remember who the mayor was at that time, uh, and said, you know, what do you think of this? You can't be proud of being the mayor of a park mm -hmm. that looks like this, the biggest park in Salford. About four, oh no, more than four weeks, probably two months later, I got four lines from the environment to say that because of the cost, yeah. couldn't do anything and then started litter picking. I couldn't go to the meetings then because I was child minding and staying away from home when they had the meetings but when the child minding arrangements altered with my grandchildren I was able to go to the meetings and then was mm -hmm. just at first really did the litter picking but yeah. in the last two years we've been able to open the tea hut mm -hmm. and uh, we've had car boot sales and we're getting our regulars and it feels like um, it's a place that people want to be and we just want to, to concentrate on making it a place that's welcome for everyone, yeah. Yeah. for the people I meet, especially, you wouldn't think that, especially in this <laughs> corona time, but in this corona time, you walk out and people are so pleased to be out, they want to talk to you. Yeah to get the park so that the toilet facilities and it can be you know a proper park that families can come at the weekends yeah. or at nights yeah. and you go to yeah. a lot of other parks and they've got all sorts of you know this mm -hmm. is a, a, the ideal park out of all the local parks around here this is a good spot isn't it yeah really. and it, it's good for running for exercise mm -hmm. from my point of view anyway you know because i enjoy my running even cycling because there isn't any early places around yeah. salford so it's to me, this is brilliant training. I go to Wales a lot, but obviously um, up there you've got the hills. But around Salford, other than this park, you can. It's quite few. It's you know for local um, running, it's brilliant. But I started um, coming about a year ago now, maybe a bit longer now. Isn't it? About oh yeah. yeah, yeah. It's over a year ago, and then with, with Sharon, and um, we asked Tony was like. Um, Involved. What was he? Manager. He's yeah. he's the secretary, secretary. of Friends of Beulah. So we asked him mm -hmm. if we could do like um, bike bike rides. That's how we started off with the cafe. We'd, every in the summer holidays, we asked if we could do something on a Wednesday from the hut. Without Karen and Sharon, we wouldn't be in the position we are today because we'd lost some members, and they came in two young. Two young, young <laughs> girls. <laughs> <laughs> Two young girls. No, with enthusiasm, yeah, I think really drive, is. and energy. Yeah. And they've, they've really revitalised it because nothing, that, that anything that we wanted to do, was it Karen and Sharon will do it. Would knew they could, they could do it. Yeah. yeah. That's how it started. So over the summer holidays last year, we did something every Wednesday, mm -hmm. and people started coming yeah. through that. 
and we sort of carried it on from then until the Corona virus. Like. Mm -hmm. So we was doing tea and coffee, but the people who come needed this. We have, have our regulars. Yeah, we have a lot of yeah. regulars and who are very lonely people. And they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's somewhere for them to come and, and, cross anything, really. and chat to yeah. us. And we've had lots of people who've come and said, oh, I haven't got any money. We're not in it to it's, make it's money. We've never been money. in it. Yeah. There's no charge when we do tea, coffee, biscuits and cake. No, That's we just, just say put a donation in. Just say, in. if you've got any yeah. money, put a donation in. There is no, no cost for it. Yeah. We just That's very generous. Very generous of you. Well, we're doing that because we know some people cannot afford. I mean, most people put something in anyway, yeah. and it'll pay for a tea and coffee. Mm -hmm. It's just that people who haven't got anything and they are struggling know that they can come and have a, at least a brew. Yeah, yeah they can come and have a brew, have some company. Hopefully, have a laugh. We generally yeah. have a laugh yeah. between yeah. us, but we yeah. do. You know, um, at Christmas we did decorations, didn't yes. we? Oh, and our major, <laughs> we haven't talked about our major event, is that for the last two years, and with the booked actually for this year as well, um, Odsal a cappella choir. Yeah. And they stand outside and sing the traditional carols, and they come inside and they sing, you know, the Christmas jingles, and Everybody yeah. joins in, we've had a bit of dancing. I know, it's really good. It's <laughs> really fun. Yeah, I remember coming this year, yeah. even even though it was raining as well, it was really well, yeah, well I know, attended. Was it's funny, don't you? I can't predict the weather here. Yeah. Yeah. After the first year, you know, I thought all of them won't want to come again. But then definitely, we, mm. we, although we don't have, we have a bit of money, but we give them a, a donation, don't we? Yeah. And we say, because they travel in from various places, that they can have. Um, Come early and you can have mince pies yeah. and, and coffee and things like pies. that. Yeah. Oh, Tesco will yeah. give them a plug. It will do. They're brilliant. <laughs> they gave yeah. us how many? 100 mince pies. Oh, my word. Yeah, they did. We collected them, so we're so pleased with Tesco. So yeah. there you are, Tesco. Yeah, and so it, it's, a, it's a happy little group. Mm. Isn't it, it is, it's nice yeah. more people, yes. more people. It's like a get. lovely family, isn't it? Yeah, because you it know, is. you have your ups and downs, you have your arguments, but then you oh, always yeah. resolve them as well. Yeah. And then you, you know, that's how you create things. It hasn't you've got all the passion. Been sailing, has it? No, no. no because you know, we've got, everybody's bringing a different personality to the group. Oh, of course. Yeah. And, and that's the good thing, isn't it? Because <laughs> not yeah. if if you've got that diverse mix of characters, then it. Yeah. It gives a bit of energy to, to the yeah. group. Yeah, it'd have been nice to be open whilst the allotments have been running as well. Well, we have, we have met people, haven't we? Yeah. 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 But, yeah. You know, and and what's your dream moving forward? This summer, though, we would have done different things, like we probably done another cycle, but I quite like the idea of getting the dog walkers involved, yeah. you know, doing something based on the dogs. Yeah, yeah even you know. dog groomers yeah. in the park. I mean, mm. there's a lot of dogs that get pampered these days, don't oh, they? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, but you could have like um, an active, you know, um, what do you call it, agility yeah. course or something. You know, just a bit of fun, not the... Because I've seen him done on um, like Sulphur Keys, have done. Yeah. You don't have to have a massive area, do you? You know, you mm -hmm. can close it in, something like that. It, it just brings people... I think the Covid has actually brought a lot more people in the park and realise actually we've got a lovely park here. Oh, mm -hmm. absolutely. That is definitely... And um, I've noticed that that we haven't really had any vandalism. I know, and in the morning, there's people collecting rubbish when I'm yeah. out running. I feel oh, a bit yeah. guilty when I'm jogging yeah. around. <laughs> there is, I would say, you know, what, yeah. you have I mean, a name at, for the collectors. The, across, the Wombles. Uh, across the park, <laughs> there are, oh, about four years ago, planted three Ow. Ow. little tiny Sorry. saplings <laughs> there were. And the first day I saw them, my heart sank, and I thought, I'll give them a week, and they'll be gone. gone. They'll be snapped off, so it'll be somebody's night, night's fun uh, to break them. But I see those saplings every day, and they're getting taller and stronger, yeah. and yeah. <laughs> I want to live long enough to see them, <laughs> so they're touching the sky and sprouting out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I would, this is one of my boyhood playgrounds. I was born around here. I've not always lived here. You know, I travel a lot, move, like you do, you get married, you move away. Mm -hmm. And I've been married a couple of times. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happily married now to Lisa though, we're settled down back in Salford. But I've been around the world a bit. I've been yeah. in South Africa for about 12 years. And uh, 
I've worked abroad, I've worked in Germany, France, a lot of different places, but do it with my trade as a pipe fitter, or a plumber by trade, but mm -hmm. pipe fitting and welding, you know. Um, but as time's gone on, I've finished up back here in Salford, and uh, yeah, it's been it's been lovely to travel away and to come back. And uh, the, the, you know, the memories when I ride around here and walk around here, and the things that are happening, the stuff that you're doing here, mm -hmm. you, you know, it's just... Uh, it's absolutely amazing. I, I love the place. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you're doing your talking tours, aren't you? So yeah. I, I have these. I have this um, video thing. Um, when the when the lockdown came, I I'm, I do. I'm you know I'm 70 now, but I do still work. I work in a local college, a few days a week. And when the lockdown came, I was furloughed, so that's fine. And uh, I stayed in. I didn't go out anywhere. My wife. Uh, she said, you're not going out, because you're nearly 70, right? I was only 70 the other week. You're nearly 70, you're at that critical age, you'll catch it. So it was great. She went out shopping and I just sat at home and had a beer. <laughs> and then eventually I said, look, I need to go out, I'm going to have a, I'm going to go out. So I went for a, I started running, went out for a run. I used to run, I used to run marathons, you know. But I found my Achilles tendon, I've done that once before as well, so I thought, I can't do that. And I do like swimming, I've got a great love of swimming, I can't go swimming anymore, so I bought a bike. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used an old bike, now I've got this, uh, a, a new bike. And I was sat in the park one day, and I was out, out next to Franco, outside Franco Farrell's house. Mm -hmm. He was a manager for Manchester United many years ago. He's about the second manager in after Matt Busby and, and um, Wilf McGuinness. And uh, I got my camera, I thought I'd go live. I'll try this. <laughs> so it's like, I, I go live regularly. Just, I don't go live, I do videos with myself singing because I'm a folk singer. Yeah. I'll go live and I started talking. Where, who lived in a house like this? That type of thing, you know. <laughs> and people started coming on, all my Manchester United friends, and um, not, none of them knew, but one of them knew. I think, I think Alan Keegan, who was a friend of mine, he's the yeah. voice of Old Trafford, he's the announcer down there. Mm -hmm. I have met him a couple of times informally at some of the, some of the dinners that I've been to, and uh, he liked it. And then what Alan started doing, digressing a little, yeah. he started doing this uh, Let the Football Do the Talking show on Facebook every Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. So all the fans could come in, get together, yeah. and he had all sorts of stuff on there. It was really good and funny, you know. And he started promoting my work, and he started saying things like, uh, this guy, Tony Eason, keeps coming on, and he just talks into his camera about anything. Because <laughs> I did, I started walking around the park and found places yeah. of interest and talked about it. In front of people, I didn't care, you know. He said, so I, I love it when it comes on. He said, I'm going to call it Tony's Talking Tours. <laughs> so Tony's yeah. Talking Tours was born, was born. that's where it came from, yeah. you know. Well that's the end of our tour around Buell Hill Park. I hope you've enjoyed meeting the lovely characters and volunteers that are helping the council to maintain Salford's biggest public park. We hope to see you again soon.